Hey everybody, welcome back to Power Bombshells. This is, I believe we're on episode 13. Yes, we are on episode 13. Uh, we're just two broads chatting about the wrestling we're watching and um, going on other people's podcasts and chatting ab <laughs> about wrestling <laughs> as well. <laughs> so we were invited uh, to be on David Lovell's um, Bug Extra. So if you have listened, we, Mel and I both were uh, lucky enough to be invited as guests on his podcast, How to, uh, How I Caught the Wrestling Bug, which I think is such a cool concept. Yeah. And so <laughs> when he has some side things that he likes to talk about, uh, it's called Bug Extra. And so he was gracious enough to ask Mel and I if we'd like to come chat about the biggest wrestling news story of the week maybe of the year next to uh cody rhodes jumping ship <laughs> uh so we got to talk about uh the sasha and naomi situation um it took us a few times but third time was a charm and we finally got it recorded last night and it is up and so we'll make sure that we tweet the link for you guys to check it out so that you can hear our thoughts on this whole situation. We had a lot to say, <laughs> um, but we will just go ahead and let you know that we are pro Sasha and pro Naomi and uh, we hope the best for them. And so, yeah, we had a lot to say and we appreciate David for giving us that, uh, that time to talk about the situation yesterday. And sorry, my mic is doing. That's okay. Things. It was, it was nice to have that platform and yeah. we, you know, so you won't hear us talk very much about it today because we already had a good talk about yeah. it. And I think that, uh, cause he's very good at, I mean, he's got great questions, you he know, does. how to keep it. I, I don't know. It was, it was really nice like to have sort of the, you know, consciousness of like, Hey, I, I know, these guys and I've talked to them before and you know so we had a really I felt like it was a very constructive conversation I think, I think so too I agree and David was like you said he had great questions he was really good about you know keeping the conversation going and then um, I think it's also you can tell that how you you and I have gotten to speaking with each other that it kind of flowed back and forth between ourselves <laughs> with David too. So, um, <laughs> so that was fun, but yeah, it was really nice. And I'm really glad we had that opportunity and that, you know, he gave us the a platform, like you said, to, to come on and talk about the situation. And so, uh, like I said, we'll make sure we post it. I may even just post it in the comments so you have a direct link to it, but we'll definitely tweet it on and off throughout the week so you get a chance to listen to it and definitely check it out and check out his other stuff because he's got some some good stuff um how i caught the about. wrestling bug is a really yeah. great um way it's, to get it's a great fun podcast anyway yeah. i'm very very pro bug <laughs> <laughs> and uh it, before i mean when i first joined the fight game media group because that was how i you know i came here by way of listening to a lot mm -hmm. of the other people it was a great way to get to know a lot of the people that i've been talking to in the group for yeah you know, i'm so i mean i'm three quarters of the year in on kind of getting to but getting to know everybody but it's right. a really nice supplemental for you know, you can chat with people on Twitter and Facebook right. and stuff. But it's nice to get a little context and you get yeah. a little special. I mean, who doesn't like to talk about how they got bit? Yeah, I and I, that's why I said I think that's just uh, when I when I found out about the podcast, I was like, this is such a brilliant idea. Like, it's a fantastic because everybody likes to be asked that. I think, and and then it's easier, like you said, on Twitter. And if you're writing it in text format, you have to be more concise. But when you're on a podcast, you can go in more in depth about how you caught the wrestling bug. So that's a really cool concept, and I really love it. So definitely, please go check out uh, David's work that he does because he does some good stuff over there. And if I had um, been slightly more prepared, I actually would have put that in the little banners, but I'm not going <laughs> to put that. I totally forgot that because I'm going to post, because I'm going to plug another show in a little while. But Yeah, uh, that's all right. That's all <laughs> we'll right. Make sure. You can go follow us on, ooh, that's a special color. It turned that, a special it color today. Look at that. It's white <laughs> on gray background. Okay, I didn't do that, so. <laughs> I don't know who fancied our power bomb shells up, but thanks. 
<laughs> but that's nice. where we will tweet the link to the yes. podcast. And yeah. I think it's a better way for you to get a clear, rounded out, nice picture of where yeah. we stand on it. Because it's not a quick conversation. No, we had a nice, like, hour-long conversation. So yeah. Just yeah. join us for a whole episode of this and then go listen to a whole episode of Bug Extra and let's listen to us talk about Sasha and Naomi. <laughs> <laughs> and since we are speaking about women's wrestling, I wanted to add this in real quick. So a few episodes ago, I was talking about um, women's wrestling army, which is the new wrestling project from Maria Canellis Bennett and, um, Ooh, and check sorry. this out. Yeah. Look, yeah, see, we got a nice little graphic there for you. So uh, the show was filmed a few weeks ago. Um, it actually is finally airing today at 5 p.m. Eastern time. This is on Sunday. I don't know if our show will air, uh, will be uploaded tonight. <laughs> so it might be Monday, but mm -hmm. even still, you can still this go back and watch it. the 22nd of May. You can go watch yes. it. So. Yeah, and so it's on uh, womenswrestlingarmy.com. Uh, it's $7.99, uh, and it looks like you're getting two episodes per month, uh, exclusive content, matches, interviews, photos, and more. Um, and then there it looks like there's also going to be a docu-reality series. Um, that will spotlight the talent, which is really cool. Um, and there's, I've seen some of the women involved. I've mentioned it on the, the episode we talked about. I do know the opening match of the show will be Lainey Luck versus Miranda Alizé. Uh, both of those are very good, uh, really great talent. I've seen them. Um, I believe Lainey has appeared on AEW. I know that Miranda Alizé has. And then she, when Ring of Honor was doing their women's, uh, one of, Women of Honor last summer, she um, was heavily featured. And if I'm not mistaken, she made it to the if it wasn't the finals, it was like the semifinals. Like she got really close to, to winning. And then of course, Roxy ended up being uh, the winner of that. And she is now signed with WWE, <clears throat> but Miranda Alizé um, has also wrestled for mission pro. Um, I believe Lainey has as well. So they definitely have some good women there. And then I don't know where on the card it will be, but I heard um, big swole versus Trisha Dora was really good, uh, which is not a surprise because <laughs> they've wrestled each wow. other uh, several times. We actually watched them, uh, over more than mania uh they had they had a matchup there um i don't know if this was for trisha's uh title or if this was a non-title match i haven't heard but i saw mike bennett uh talking about it the day it was filmed and he was talking about how it was a phenomenal match and he was like make sure that like when this is available you check out that match so it sounds like they got a lot of really good stuff over there and obviously we want to support women's wrestling and for 7.99 a month i think that's, that's and you're getting I mean, two shows yeah, yeah. And you're helping independent talent. And so I think and Maria did a phenomenal job with uh, with a Women of Honor last year. So I'm really excited to see what she does with this. So I definitely want to check that out. And I don't know if I'll get to it today, but I definitely, it's on my list of things to get to. <laughs> and sure. watches a lot of wrestling, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I kept going out of my way. So if you saw when I think we popped up the image at the beginning, you saw an image of Takeshita. And he, and if not, it's okay. I'm gonna show it again because it has our really yes. cute logo. It does. <laughs> uh, so Takeshita, uh, he Rocks. wrestled. Yeah, he's <laughs> he's fantastic. He gets better and better like every time I see him. Uh, he, um, but so Deadlock Pro is a show I've talked about on here, and I'm behind on it. It's free, it's free on YouTube and. They did a live, they announced it, I think, on Friday. So, and I thought I was going to get to it, and then other things happened. But uh, so it's free on YouTube. Uh, he wrestled Adam Brooks, who Adam Brooks was really great. I saw him in PWX like three years ago. Um, who He's phenomenal too. And so I really can't. And I saw a friend of mine has watched it already, and he was like, it's really good. He was like, make sure you watch it. <laughs> so right. I definitely will. And then if you saw uh, Dynamite this week, then you saw Takeshita take on the AW World Champion in like what his fourth match in the company he's already facing. <laughs> the, the champion, the guy. <laughs> it was like that, you know, that must, you know, they've got to think very highly of Takeshita if they're giving him an opponent like that this early on in his AW career, I guess you would say. <laughs> well, and there were moments where I was like, wait a minute. I, I mean, there were some near falls that were very near falls. Yeah, they I were, mean, it was, they were not kidding around. They no. were, it was like at one point kind of Bob just looked over me. He's like, this guy's, 
amazing. Like, yeah, it's there. It's weird. I mean, it's we we were talking about. I, you know, it was like, where did he come from? And I was saying DDT, and right. they have their relationship with DDT. And mm-hmm. I said this to you just a little while ago. It's right. like if you're gonna present a product, yes, send this guy. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, they were very smart in that. And uh, he's just incredible. And he, yeah, he did not hold back on the champ whatsoever. <laughs> he was like, you know, this is my big shot. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go all out. And he did. And it was funny because uh, I was, I follow Emmy Sakura on, uh, on Twitter and she had shows, she a lot of times will film like little clips of things. And so she caught up with Adam Page literally right after the match like i don't think he was expecting her like if you see the look on his face he was kind of startled but he like just grinned and he could see like he's got like scratches on his chest he's really red he's clearly out of breath he's sweaty and he was just like and she was like well what did you think about wrestling to kesha and he was like you know i knew he was gonna be good but he was like i'm worn out he was like i haven't been this worn out since i did the 60 minute match with Brian Danielson. And he nice. was like, and this match was not nearly as long. And I, he said, I am just as tired as I was then. He was like, I, and he just was like, I, I wasn't prepared for how good he really is. And he was saying that he really enjoyed wrestling him and he would love to wrestle him again. So I was like, that's some really high praise coming from your champion, you know? So I thought that was really great. And so I hope to see Takeshita as much as possible. And he's already, and I think I mentioned on the, the last episode, um, PWG, he uh, show, he had his debut at the last show, and he has, Daniel Garcia is their their current champion, and he has already challenged Daniel Garcia, and that nice. match will take place at the next PWG show. So Takeshita is definitely make. I don't know how long he's supposed to be in the U.S., but he's definitely making his you know he's making use of his time really well. And another thing that's really funny is he um, he apparently has fought, he's discovered Cinnabon. <laughs> Oh, nice. <laughs> he oh, keeps talking geez. about how much he loves it. And Cinnabon like <laughs> responded to him. And so they've been going back and forth. And he was like, I love oh, you too. Or so I don't know. It was really cute. And so he keeps asking like where Cinnabon is. And then he, I saw so he wanted to have a shirt and somebody, I guess, made it for him. It was a little graphic and it has like a little Cinnabon, um, <laughs> cinnamon roll in the middle of the shirt. That's it's very awesome. funny. I so, love that. <laughs> Yes. It's amazing. You got you got Suzuki's got socks. Yeah, Ko- Kojima's got bread, uh-huh. and he's got he's got Cinnabon. Yeah, see, that's fine. Mm-hmm. I, <laughs> it's always funny what when you go, whether you are going to a place or someone is coming to a place, right? That you know well, what yeah. thing really clicks with people, right? It was like I remember there was a taco blog with um oh. Her name is just completely no, I, I'm gonna forget her name completely. And it was one of the Japanese girls. Oh god damn it. Sorry. But anyway, she like she loved tacos. It was uh-huh. like the newest thing in the whole world. It was like, <laughs> this is something that I'm going to eat all the time. <laughs> right. I just love that reaction where it's like, again, you it's not something that's normal to your space. So right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean. And they, they are pretty good. Those things. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you see, there's while, some, but... I've seen Alex Zane has been posting some of the things he's been trying while he's in Japan for VOSJ. And it's just, uh, apparently he's liked pretty much everything he's tried. Um, but he was eating, like he posted yesterday and it, he was eating raw horse meat for the first time. And Whoa. apparently, apparently he loved it. And oh <laughs> yeah. And so, and so you see that they're doing the same thing. Like they're in Japan and yep. him and Ace Austin are, they look like they're the one, most of the times when I see pictures ace austin is with him and it seems like that's kind of what they're doing as they're going out and he but i did see he said that he was really uh, missing a hamburgers and craving one and so he went and found some place that had them and so he was like i usually I find western restaurants just yeah <laughs> well we know? all know what is it uh um tj is it Wait, is it no? Is that Ruby Tuesdays? I think it's TGI Fridays. That's the where they used to BTE used to go all the time. The they were talking uh, about the Cracker fine, Barrel. The, well, that's barrel. here, but in Japan they were talking about the fine Japanese oh, cuisine, and I think it was okay. also, I think it was always TGI always like Fridays. Fridays. I think <laughs> yeah. that's right. Yes, I think you're right. <laughs> so Put that's a definitely random place. <laughs> a nice segue into uh, the next topic, which is New Japan, which is you know what we talk about all the time, <laughs> um, and we are. 
Uh, I'm still behind on Strong because I have been trying to get caught up on BOSJ. I've Same. watched um, the first full three nights of the of BOSJ, and then from I got only one episode, one episode, one match into night four, uh, which was Wheeler Yuta uh, versus Doki. Um, so that's as far as I have gotten. But apparently, I think we're on. I think that this morning, I think was uh, night six. So I'm way Counting. behind you. I've been like, uh, I was binging them earlier. I got to the first two nights and I really, really I mean, there's some good matches. So yeah. that's what I've been trying to like. See, and that's the thing is because I feel like, because um, that's when I got to night four, I was like, well, really the main thing I want to see is Wheeler Yuta. And then I was like, so I don't know if I'll just watch that and then kind of like go on to the next thing because I've heard from night five, I've heard that, Haramu versus um who, who is it? It's Haramu versus I just had it. Um the hell? hang on, I've got it right here. All right. I have it. And no, I you think fine. I would remember because but they were talking about how they were like go oh yeah, Ace Austin. Duh. Oh <laughs> dream matchup. <laughs> so they were like, and that's actually not even the main event of night five. The main event is Alex Zane versus Ishimori, but they were saying oh, they were like, go out of your way and make sure you watch Haramu versus Ace Austin, which you do not have to twist my arm. To no, make that, that sounds happen. perfectly fine with <laughs> yeah. me. I'm, yeah. Yeah. So and I wish so of course they have not started putting up individual matches at no. all. Nope, you have it's to roll through yourself. At, at least the, the one good thing is the shows are only like two hours, two and a half yeah, hours. Yeah, they're or pretty like that. So it's not the it's good. not the four hour, the big four hour shows. But when you're trying to catch up, it's a lot. <laughs> and so we're gonna have to start skipping around. I think, which is what we did last night. But you know they've had. So, so I have, we don't have to go through match by match because there's a lot that has happened because it's five matches per night. But, you know, they've had, like, night one was um, Ace Austin versus Clark, Clark Connors kicked Clark off Connors, the entire which thing. Was amazing. Yeah, that, which was, that that, was if awesome. that's the match that you want to have to kind of kick Watch. off a BOSJ, especially because, you know, it's two, I guess, foreigners. And then, obviously, I mean, Clark is known to New Japan fans, obviously, because of Strong and things like that. So Ace Austin may be somebody that a lot of fans are not super... If you don't watch Impact, you're probably not familiar with Ace Austin, which he's one of my favorites. Like I've Yeah, me him. too. I've right. watched him since he was on the Indies, and we talked about this when we were like going over the, the card a couple weeks ago, um, or the announcements. And yeah, so Ace Austin has just... He's been a perfect fit for this. He was so somebody far. I really wanted to see this happened to it. I said yeah. it like a few weeks before it happened. I was right. like, if that's even possible, that would be the perfect setting. And it's, I mean, I, I have seen that match, that Clark Hunter's match. And then it was like, yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> exactly. It's and so, so they good proved... for him as a wrestler too. Yeah. I mean, it's what you get out of it as much as what you're putting in yeah for sure and so i yeah i thought that was a really great match for both of them to to open to to open up the whole thing and to introduce themselves to maybe some fans who weren't super familiar so i think putting them early on in the tournament made fans probably pay attention more than if it had been maybe match three or something like that or happened later in you know, the, the tournament. So I think that was really smart of them to open up with that. And then the very next match was Alex Zane <laughs> versus Conor Maru. So they kind of got them out really funny, really fast. And one of the lines that made me laugh and it made, it stood out is that Chris Charlton said, Alex Zane calls himself the sauce and Conor Maru is on the sauce. <laughs> <laughs> How much better is Chris Charlton get? Chris Charlton has like he's he's there. He's mm -hmm. leveled up to full blown. Like I get what Kevin Kelly was teaching me. Yeah, he's <laughs> there. He's yeah, he so is. He's there. just he's on it. He's so funny, and he makes he cracks me up all the time because he always he's really good about it because he just like slides it in there like <laughs> you wouldn't expect, especially from before. And so now he's obviously a lot more comfortable. Um, with you know what he's doing and kind of ad living and things like that, so and it definitely it stood out when I heard it and I laughed. Um, so that you know that was really good. And so Alex Zane is 
I think he's fantastic too. And so I really enjoy him being in this. And then, um, so this, the next match was Akira versus show, which Akira, this is the first time I've gotten to see Francesco, um, Akira. And I, I really like what I've seen so far. Yeah. Uh, he's very good. I can see why he's, <laughs> he's in this, um, you know, he's in this tournament. Um, and then, and so Akira um, actually picked up the win here. So we got, so the first three matches, Ace Austin, Alexander, and Akira all picked up the win in their first New Japan matches, or at least the first tournament matches. So I thought that was really cool the, to see. And then uh, the next match was Haramu versus Taguchi. Um, of course, Haramu won that. That's not <laughs> not a surprise. He's what? probably pretty much everybody's favorite to win <laughs> just yeah. because of Haramu and this is his this is this is his tournament like this is what he thrives in and so mm-hmm. um and then yo and ishimori wrapped up night one uh ishimori got the win so one of the big stories of the night besides the new guys getting wins was um show and yo did not win their first night on their first yeah. night and so that yeah. was kind of they both were upset uh so that was kind of the big story out of night one um, is there anything you want to add about night one before? No, I- you got okay. it. So night two uh, kicked off with uh, L. Lindemann versus, so this is B Block uh, versus Doki. Um, that was a fun match. L. Lindemann's very good. Um, I mean, obviously Doki is too, <laughs> but yeah. So um, I've only seen a little bit of L. Lindemann, but I really like what I've seen of him so far as well. Um, but Doki uh, picked up the win there. Uh, ELP came out with his uh, X Pac tribute gear <laughs> that he had on. So, if you've seen, he's got the very fancy jacket that he can like control and do. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. And That's so, right, because you I, know he did that. He did the Scott Hall tribute. Yep, and so I this time now. he did yep. X Pac, and he had like the the black and green uh, colors, and his pants were black and green. And so he had the nice little X Pac tribute, which was cool to see. Um, and he took on Bushi. Uh, that was a fun match too. Uh, ELP also picked up the win there. Uh, next was Robbie Eagles versus Wheeler Yuta. Uh, definitely. I enjoyed this match. I really like Robbie Eagles. I think he's very talented. And of course, you know, we're all, (laughs) we're all Yuta Wheeler fans over here at Power Bombshells. (laughs) You know that we love him. Um, and he actually did not get the win. So it was interesting that the night one we had, you know, we saw Alex Zane and Akira and, uh, Ace Austin pick up the win, but then night two, Yuta comes in and he does not pick up the first win. So that was kind of interesting to see that dynamic of how they did that. Um, next was TJP versus Watto. Uh, TJP picked up the win. And then the last match was Despy versus Teton. And Despy picked up the win here, but Teton has some really cool gear. I love yeah, his he gear. Is yeah. right now. He yeah, and right then now. Despy did pick up that win, and he also ripped Teton's mask because he's rude <laughs> and just like ripped it. It's like, what are you doing? I was like, first of all, you know, as someone who wears a mask, that you are not supposed to rip someone else's mask. And then second of all, his mask is cool as hell. Are you jealous? Is that why we're ripping it? <laughs> Maybe it. We threw a tantrum. <laughs> he did, but it was still a really good it match. It is GLP. So. Yeah. Well, that's true. <laughs> he is kind of, yeah. I mean, if anyone's going to throw a temper tantrum about the mask. That is a good point. <laughs> uh, so yeah, night two, I thought was pretty solid. Um, so far, I'm thinking that A Block has got the, I'm more into the A Block stuff. I, don't, well, I mean, A Block, uh, kind of in the way that G1 tends to do this yeah. too. I think they call it A Block for a reason a yeah. lot of times. And yeah. I, you know. Yeah. I would agree. I would agree. And that's not to say that B block is not good. It's just, there's no, a different no, type of, no. there's different types of matches. And I guess that's probably why you would, you see somebody like Wheeler Yuta on that side of the B yeah. block because of what he does compared to what other, you know, what some of these other guys are doing and he's more, uh, you know, technical and map based and things like that. So I kind of think that's why they put him where they put him. Um, but I, you know, it's still, it's obviously everybody who's in BOSJ deserves to be there. So, um, I kind of like that they do it because it builds a story in your head about, and you know, is this block better than this block? And then right. if you have a winner at a B block, it makes it just a little bit more exciting. Because yeah. You're like, oh, I that's would agree a-. with that. I mean, I think that because of the way that New Japan does their storytelling, I think that it's even subtle details like that. They actually are like, you know, I mean, tournaments. <laughs> yeah. I'm a big fan of tournaments in general because I, you know, I played soccer from the time I was five. So, 
I, it's some, it's a format I'm familiar yeah. with because that's how you compete. So yeah, exactly. And New Japan is, uh, I don't think there's anyone better at tournaments than New yeah. Japan. No, and I then mean, building their stories around them because it's hard yeah. to keep people's attention for four weeks. and six and eight weeks. I mean, <laughs> yeah. And I find I'm like, I'm like every day I'm jumping out of bed, like I'm ready to go. (laughs) I mean, when it gets to G1 season, it's like, oh yeah, let's go. Where, yeah. Why, where is it? Turn it on. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 I love both of these tournaments and I I need, I've watched a little bit of world tag league. Like I've, I think I've watched, I don't even know if I was gonna say, I think I've watched one all the way through. And I think that's a lot. (laughs) I I tried to, and then I started getting different kind of commitment. Yeah. And I started getting behind with it. And then, so I've tried to check out things here. Like, so I don't watch and which is interesting because I love tag team wrestling. Yeah. But, and so, but for whatever reason, the tournament is really hard for me to, to keep up with. Um, I don't know if it's just because of the timing of the year that it comes out or just, I don't know. It just, is really hard. So I try to at least like see what people are talking about and at least yeah. go check out those matches. Um, I should sit down and invest more time into it. Maybe one of these days that will happen. <laughs> but I, mean, but still. I think that you're paying attention and that you're willing to go watch the matches that people care about. I mean, it's yeah. some things are going to work for you and some things just aren't. That's true. Yeah. So and, and singles I mean, yeah. tournaments are just easier to, to stomach. Yeah. It's one guy and it's, I mean, I agree with you. I've watched plenty of the matches, but different kind of yeah. commitment yeah it is for for and i'm not really sure why that is but yeah for I, like i will sit through i i love bosj like even even though i'm behind like i will make sure that i keep oh yeah i'll it. be and catching so, up I and am then with g1 up. yeah and g1 of course i'm on top of too because i, yeah. I love g1 but yeah so for wh- whatever reason world tag league does not get the same attention that i get to the other one so but I like but still, kevin but kelly said that fans are going to be able to start making noise in june i had a friend tell me I, I saw Kevin a Kelly reference to that that they thought made they were- that re- oh, he just said something time. about it. It was uh, that was also the same friend who said, "Isn't it cool to see um, Forbidden Door ads on the on the New Japan World while you're watching Best of Super Juniors?" <laughs> and I was like, "You know what?" And I hadn't seen one yet, and then one popped up while I was watching, mm-hmm. and I was like grinning like an idiot because I was <laughs> like, "That's so cool!" But it does make it feel more real when it's yeah. popping up with the Totacon thing and the mm-hmm. here's your Tanahashi spot and your whatever little thing that's gonna happen. And it right. was like, "Oh, that's so cool!" Yes. <laughs> Exactly. And I guess I'm wondering when they're going to start really, uh, obviously I think they'll, you know, it'll be after double or nothing, but I'm interested to see when they start releasing. And Dominion. Uh, Well, yeah, that's right. So Dominion. So after Dominion, probably they're probably, if somebody doesn't show up at Dominion, then it'll probably have like the Jericho video that, or the Mox video that pops up and Mm -hmm. like, well, I've, and I think we've all pretty much, like we talked about before, we're pretty much a guaranteed that John Moxley versus Tana is happening at Forbidden Door. That was pretty much, you know, left. we got that from, you know, from Capital Collision. We pretty much figured from that main event that that was what we were getting there. Tana can't ignore match. him anymore. Yeah. <laughs> he, he's got to answer him. Um, and then we've seen people talk about like obviously kenta has like been saying that he's not going to wrestle cm punk and cm punk says he's not wrestling kenta and then the other night he who was it um somebody i forget who did oh adam hangman page that's right he did the go to sleep because uh because cm punk had done the buckshot lariat in his match the week before so kenta put kenta then the greater than symbol and he put hangman page and then he put the greater than symbol and cm punk so <laughs> even if they we maybe we don't get them at forbidden door but it's definitely coming at some but we're point. gonna get some fun on twitter at, at about some it point, or at least they're just gonna keep sniping at each other on twitter at the very least <laughs> which is great um future shows mm-hmm. best of so super very, juniors yes yeah, so um let's see here so night three um which you said you have not gotten into so i won't spoil anything with winners and things you don't have to spoil anything okay so night three you can uh, talk about it i won't hear it's not your it's not (laughs) you it's my brain when i'm not wanting to have things okay my brain sort of has a weird filter 
<laughs> and I will, even if you spoil it for me, I won't remember until I watch it that you okay. spoiled it for me. So, well, so if you guys don't want to hear, hopefully I won't spoil anything. So, but if anyone either. else doesn't want to have <laughs> night three of Best of Super Junior spoiled, take a little break, come yeah. back. <laughs> so then so, I talk no, about Dominion a little bit and the fact yes. that there's a free Best of Super Juniors yes, that I discovered yesterday. Huge, yeah. um, so night three opened with Yo versus Clark Connors. Very good match. Clark Connors is showing what he's all about. Uh, Yo finally got his win. <laughs> Uh, the next one was Ace Austin versus Conor Maru. This was a pretty solid match. Um, I'm not the biggest Conor Maru fan. I don't dislike him, but I'm not like. I gotcha. And I don't mean yeah. And so, but I just of course love Ace Austin. <laughs> so I'm like I'm all in on Ace Austin. I want Ace Austin to win the whole tournament. <laughs> if we're being honest, I just I want him to win the whole thing. <laughs> that's that's where I'm going with this. But even if he doesn't, I am being super entertained, and he's getting to wrestle all kinds of cool people, and he's gonna be back in. It was funny because I was watching Impact last week, and Ace popped up, and I was like, did they film this because he's in Japan. And then I realized the logo, the new Japan logo was behind him. And it said Japan, oh, but I can't remember what city they were in. And it had it in the corner. And he was talking about the X division. Uh, Cause he's the X division champion. Uh, he's defending it at slam anniversary on June 9th. I think it's June 19th. Or if it's not the 19th, it's the 20th. It's that coming up. It's coming up. And so, so far they've had, uh, three people That's qualify. Grace for Impact Territory, so check yes. them out. They'll Definitely tell you all do. the word. They're great. We yes. love Grace for Impact. They'll we tell do. you all the correct dates and times. Yes, they will. <laughs> and so they we so they've had qualifying matches for Slam Anniversary, and so far it's for the exhibition title. It's been uh, Kenny King made it in. Speedball Mike Bailey just made it in, and Speedball yes. Mike Bailey versus. Uh, Laredo kid from last week was phenomenal. They opened, excuse me, they opened impact and they didn't have a commercial break at all during that main, during that opening match. I'll have to like check that were, out. I missed yeah. last week's. I, yeah, for, so it's definitely the first time I, I haven't watched in a while. I yeah. just was doing other things. I right. Think. Yeah. It, yeah. So it was the very first match and it was really good. And then I feel like I'm, there's, there's a third person and I have completely blanked on who it was because I wasn't planning on talking about it. So I forgot. Okay. <laughs> where I was going with tangent. This. Yes. So make sure you watch Race for Impact because they will tell you yeah, we'll, <laughs> who has made this it. This has in. been a power bombshells tangent where we yes. plug another show that we enjoy on our network. We do. We watch it. Too. Yes. That's and they I do, get they do excellent work over them. there. So make sure you check them out and go go see them. Uh, so yeah, back to that. Uh, the next match was uh, Alex Zane versus Show. Another very solid match. Uh, Alex Zane and Ace Austin so far are, have won all their, their four and their, they've got four points apiece. So that's really cool to see. So maybe it comes down between Ace Austin and Alex Zane here maybe. in the end. Uh, then the next, <laughs> this match, the next one was Taguchi versus Ishimori. And so the reason I'm laughing is because I just remembered Kevin Kelly's reaction <laughs> because <laughs> in the way in which Taguchi won this match. I don't want to give her anything away, but it was really funny. A very Taguchi way of winning a match. Was it we'll just say off? there were butt cheeks involved. <laughs> Kevin Kelly yelling. That was you. another Chris Charlton moment. Um, he actually made a joke about uh, no butt stuff. And I was like, okay, that's <laughs> funny too. <laughs> it is He's funny. really yeah, hitting yeah. his drive. <laughs> yeah, the last two, the, or from nights two and three, it's just, it's uh, just Kevin Kelly by himself. And so I would have loved to have Chris Stroughton's reaction to this because Kevin Kelly's was ew, ew, ew. <laughs> What's his reaction? <laughs> it was fantastic. And Kevin Kelly was not having it. <laughs> but it was so really I do funny. here. What yeah. I so do. I would, yes. Yeah, so I know nice. that he's an, he's an integral part of the uh, history of Best of Super Juniors. But at the yeah. same time, Come on, man. I enjoy Taguchi. I enjoy his class. I love Taguchi so. <laughs> right. Yeah, and to get it. And so, I and feel like he of, has to be there. He's kind of a staple. He's, yeah, he's, kind of. Yeah, kind of like we were talking about with Har This is Haramo's tournament. Like, Taguchi has to be in them, though. <laughs> he he has to be there. Super Junior staple. <laughs> and so, yeah, it was really, it was a good match. So, definitely night three. If you watch any match, I would recommend that one um, because there was also there was a gif of it. Uh, I saw a gif of it on Twitter like later on, like after I had watched it. It was funny. 
because I could hear Kevin Kelly's voice in my head as I was watching. Um, and then the main event was Haramu versus Akira. This actually go out of your way to watch that match because this that sounds was really, like a good match. Yeah, that was there's a lot of back and forth in that one. Uh, Akira looked great. Uh, he nearly got the upset a couple times. It was it's definitely worth having watching. seen him in strong now and actually being paying attention. It's it's good stuff. So yeah, yeah. Um, and then, like I said, with night four, I only got one match in, even though I knew who won the second match because I was trying to fast forward uh, to get to the tournament matches. And I went right past match one and at the end of match two and I saw and I stopped it and I was like, oh, I was like, well, now I know who won this match. I don't know <laughs> if I need to watch it now. So, but Yuta versus Doki opened, uh, opened the night. Uh, it was really, that was a really solid match. I enjoyed this one. Uh, we don't, was, you're uh, saying it was Yuta, okay. You're saying it was okie dokie? Yes, it was okie dokie. <laughs> I'm sorry, Gino's not around. I need it. Uh, then we need Gino here. <laughs> we need our dokie jokies. We do. And I do, I want to say Kevin Kelly made a reference to that when he, I was watching. I feel like he I did heard because it. because somebody called him out on Twitter about it this morning. And <laughs> he was saying that uh, Gino was sneaking in and out of the uh, thingy to avoid immigration. I'm like... <laughs> You, you love it too. You know you miss it. You know you do. Uh, oh, yeah, <laughs> you can't it's help it. You can't. <laughs> I never <laughs> thought it would be like when I first had Gino Gambino on the the mic. Yeah, I was Kevin not... Kelly has turned me around to so many people. I was like, yeah. When Gino terrible. first got involved, I just couldn't. I just couldn't get with it. And I was like, yeah, I don't know about this guy. I don't really care for him. And then he just like kind of grew on me. And it's funny because like Nikki and I always talk about the way he says Kevin. Because it's Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, it's yeah, it's really weird watching stuff like this, expecting to hear Gino Gambino and you don't hear him anymore. And it's very weird. So <laughs> yeah, he is definitely missed. And I, I'm glad that they are giving some little shout outs and tributes to him mm -hmm. <laughs> with them not being there. Um, so Yuta finally picked up his first win mm -hmm. um, over Doki in a pretty solid match. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it. Uh, the next match was Teton versus El Lindemann. That's the one that I fast forwarded to the end by mistake mm -hmm. <laughs> and saw who won, uh, which was El Lindemann. And then the other three matches that I haven't gotten to, um, and I hope hopefully we'll get to, but it's uh, Robbie Eagles versus Bushi, Watto versus ELP, and Desi Despy versus TJP rounded out night four. Night five is the one where I know we need to go back and make sure we watch Haramu versus Ace Austin. And then I believe night six was this morning for us. Okay. <laughs> We're trying to get there. So that is where we are with that. And then if you want to talk about the other, there's a, about the free show. Yeah. I popped on there to take a peek because people kept talking about Dominion. Right. And realize that they actually are having an entire free live Best of Super Juniors on. So this Tuesday, yeah. May 24th, it's 5 a.m. Eastern. But I would imagine it's rewatchable. But Probably. I love that they are, they, they're they having the English commentary version. It's at yeah, Corkin, which is one of their cool. big... Corkin is like one of their big locations now. Yeah, that's definitely... Obviously, everyone's kind of quiet right now but and i I, think I have i think i built the uh no no it was the other one that i built upside down for no entirely no <laughs> it's not a bunch of like bs matches you're getting good matches you're yeah. getting alex zane versus akira you're getting uh, teton tjp Taguchi, so you can enjoy his uh him for your shenanigans clark, clark <laughs> connor's uh, Bushi versus Wheeler Yuta, Yo Ace Austin, Doki versus ELP, Master Wado, R Robbie Eagles, Romu Kanamaru, but it's uh, Taichi Shimori versus Show, Desperado versus Al Lindemann. So all the people that we just kind of talked about, almost like, it's almost like a. There's. I know it's timing, but yeah. it's like a. Here's a taste test of all of the different people that yeah, are in the Yeah, cuz I was like I was just day. counting. That's the entire that's the entire block. So they both. built that's, it to yeah. be like here's the good things that we've done so far. Yeah. And again, this was all in the because they kept I kept hearing them talk about Dominion card 
matches. And I'm mm-hmm. thinking in terms of Forbidden Door. And I was like, wait a minute. This is a whole show. This is yeah. Have the have a free one. And New Japan World are not usually Mm-mm. I mean, Garrett's mentioned it about a million times is that they should have done this or they should have given, you know, right. this because they could have sold the the thing, you know, they could have sold a bunch of subscriptions to New Japan World off of it. Yeah. This was a gr- I mean, it's a Tuesday. Hopefully it'll be rewatchable. I right. imagine it will be, but I know people who will sit and watch this. It yeah. Being Especially free. because it's the entire, it's both blocks in yeah. one night. So you're getting... You're, instead of having to separate it out, like you get to watch the entire both A and B blocks here too, which I think is f- fantastic. So you get to see, and you're going to see guys that you know, but then if you're not like, if you don't follow New Japan closely, right. then you're going to see a lot of their really good guys who are not named Okada. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, Ibushi right. And things like that. So you're going to see a lot of their really solid roster. They're young here. and they're younger talent. They're, yeah. they're, before we go, you know, before we become Okada, we start here in this this division, and this is right. what that looks like. And but I was like, oh my gosh, this is great! I I just think I wanted to give it a shout out just because I yeah, I'm glad you to did watch it. I think it's off. Yeah, this is a really great, great idea. I mean, they're starting off with Alex Zane versus Francesco Akira, so they're wanting to grab you like <laughs> it's right out of the gate yeah, right they yeah so this was really strong it's a strong card and i'm assuming since they're doing all 10 matches uh that they are not doing like their pre like six man matches that they've been doing on you know each night this looks like we're gonna get straight out of the gate tournament and show matches. you a show yeah exactly yeah. so For i think this- people to get signed up because because i mean it gives them a chance to talk about g1 which is coming up yeah. Gives them a chance to talk about Forbidden Door, which I it's a uh, I don't know what the deal is going to be here in America. How that's it's just going to be a pay per view, I think. So yeah. it won't be. It's only the Japanese, you know, side of it. But yeah, I just love the idea of doing this right before like something like Dominion and G One, because especially with Dominion being a few days off from the final, yeah, the the Super Juniors. It's definitely it's gonna suck. like. Get people signed up for New Japan World, right? It's, yes, it's and then a make perfect sure time. Dominion New is Japan always World, a good show. <laughs> when you sign up for New Japan World, if you are not signing up now, they charge on the first of every month their time, which is usually the thirtieth or thirty first here. But if you sign, so if May twenty fourth, you watch this and you love this, and you sign up right then and there. They will charge you again on the first. So do not be surprised if you get double charged because that's how they're their system is set up. And so that's like when I first started watching, like that's what I was like driven into my head was make sure you sign up <laughs> like as close to the first as spot or on the first, just wait till the first because you will get charged again. So even if you chart, if you oh, sign I up, I think we'll still get you dominion. <laughs> I think that you will, cause it's yeah. the 2nd of June. So sign up as close to the, what Sam's yeah. talking about, which is perfect, perfect timing. Yeah, exactly. So just make sure, like, I mean, you can sign uh, up on the twelfth. Okay. If you want to sign up on the twenty fifth, sure. Just don't be you. You'll chart. They'll pay you. You'll pay your nine ninety nine then, but then you'll turn around and pay it on the first. So if you want to, I would suggest. And if you have a, a credit card that uh, helps you avoid foreign transaction fees, that also helps because they do charge in yen. <laughs> yes, they do. They do. <laughs> so, but that it comes is- down to like eight ninety nine. Yeah, technically, yeah, it's, it's the cheapest subscription I have right yeah, now. Yeah, it's a, and it's worth so, it. It's definitely even if I only it. watch. <laughs> sometimes I don't watch like the road two shows like to get up to that, mm-hmm. but even still, it is worth the the eight ninety nine. That it technically ends up being because just the paper, not pay per view, but like their big event that they have each month is worth that alone. So, but there's so Strong much wrong con- is worth signing up for. Yes, as as and I'm there's concerned. so much content there. Like if you really want to deep dive into <laughs> to New Japan, there's so many things that you can watch. There's a lot of behind the scenes things. They're really good about. Oh, they some- have so much of like the old. You can watch mm-hmm. old everybody. You want to watch Shibata? You know sh- some of the Shibata people that are right. Just- now you want to watch him wrestle you couldn't watch all those old uh, right uh, matches um, yeah there's all kinds of stuff. old way way really old chris jericho on there like they actually yeah. and they have it archived in such a way it's yes. not it's not like 
the cock. <laughs> it is not like a cock <laughs> at all. It's actually <laughs> broken up where it's like, here's these mat kinds of matches. Here's this kind of matches. Here's the stuff from this time frame. They have yeah. their sixties and seventies, and it's built in such a way where you can actually find things. Yeah, so, so. it's really cool. So you can really like. You can you can do what I mean, like you can go. We are really not deep getting paid it. by New Japan. We uh, would just love it. No, and that's what I was gonna say. And even with so even with a subscription, so you can use it and watch like the one big show a month and get your nine ninety nine out of it, or you can watch. You know, you can deep dive for you know for that. You can deep dive into a lot of different things, and there's a lot of like I said, there's a lot of behind the scenes type of things that they do. Um, they're generally pretty good about putting up captions sometimes. They're not so much. Um, their YouTube page is generally pretty good about putting up captions uh, for like post match things. Sometimes mm -hmm. they're right on it immediately. And then sometimes it takes them some time to go back and, and get that, but they are generally, you know, so there's a lot there uh, for the, for the price that you pay. So that's yeah. our little spiel. Like we said, <laughs> this, is not, you get this is not an ad. This is just, we genuinely we just love it. Yeah, we genuinely love it. And you get to watch, a, a, you get like a whole sample, you get a whole show's worth of a sample on. Mm -hmm. uh, and on Mondays, on they do, um, on Mondays, they do the free, they do the free match and it's generally, oh, right. yeah. there's all kinds of cool stuff. And so since it's BOSJ, I think they go back and they show like old BOSJ matches for free. Nice. And then like when those G1, they'll show old G1, they'll show like one old G1 match for free. And then like, and then in between there's like, so every Monday there's a free match. So even if, we have not convinced you to subscribe yet. <laughs> there is free match Monday, which I recommend checking out too. So, yeah. um, and so speaking of Dominion, we have gotten a few matches so far uh, that have been announced. Um, so it looks like we're getting uh, Shingo versus uh, Tai Chi. Um, and then that's not, that's not anything with a title, right? I don't think either of them have anything, correct? Don't think so. I don't think so either. Uh, then we're getting Tama Tonga versus Carl Anderson. So that's kind of been like we've talked about before. That's an ongoing story uh, with Bullet Club and G.O.D. And G.O.D. have been kicked out. And now they've aligned with Tana. So it's very interesting that they that uh, they're baby faces now <laughs> and still trying to get used to that, seeing that. So they're wrestling. It is there. Yeah. So we're getting that one and then we're getting, um, a tag match. This one is for the tag team titles. Yeah, this uh, is. It's, uh, basically they're trying to get their, ah, their belts back. Yes. And I hope they do. Hope <laughs> so they it's a uh, greatest yeah. Ocon and Jeff Cobb are trying to get their, uh, their tag team titles back from, um, Fale and Chase Owens. Um, but a lot of Bullet Club have titles now, so I don't know if they'll get if they'll be successful. I hope they are. Uh, and then we also know what the main event of Dominion is, um, which has been building as well. We're getting uh, Okada is defending his title against our boy Jay White, even though Okada is also our boy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is a match, especially so if you what was it? Uh, not um, wrestling. Don Taku was the last big show they had. And well, that wasn't in the U S and uh, Jay has been doing his whole U S of J tour over here. Uh, he's been an impact. He's been on strong. He's been an AW. He's basically been everywhere. Uh, and so he showed up at Don Taku and um, waited until Okada had won. And he came out and he was like, Surprise! I'm back. Uh, <laughs> and I guess what I'm here for. <laughs> well, he did single-handedly sell out Madison Square Garden. He did, so, and um, that should not be forgotten. Even though he will never let you, he will never let you forget it. <laughs> he will not let you forget it. And that wrestling Don Taco was basically. Um, Bullet Club Appreciation Night because it was their night. It was their night. <laughs> it was their nine year anniversary. So forget Jericho Appreciation Society. We have Bullet Club well, Appreciation. This is real wrestling, though. They're sports on our That team. is true. That is very yeah. true. <laughs> so we have that. So that match should be really good. I'm looking forward to that. And I'm sure the card, once BOSJ starts wrapping up, we'll kind of get some. We'll get some more matches filled in in the next few weeks. Because um, when did you say that one was? June the 12th. Yeah, June 12th. So, yeah. 12th, yeah. 
So there should we be. We have double or nothing on the 29th. Is that the yes. next day? This next Sunday, <laughs> which I kept thinking when I was watching Rampage and I was writing about it, I was thinking it was two more Sundays, oh, not because no. I was thinking. I for, was not thinking this Sunday and next Sunday. I was thinking this Sunday, next Sunday, and then this Sunday. And then I was like, oh, no. <laughs> no, it is next week. <laughs> I did the exact same thing. I went, oh, crap, that's next weekend. Yeah. Like, the actual I keep next thinking weekend. We, yeah, I keep <laughs> thinking there's one weekend in between. And I was like, nope, that is not correct. No. Which is why Rampage basically filled out the rest of the card, except for the two, uh, the two Owen matches. And I'm sure we'll get one more buy-in match. Um, so the card filled out, the card has filled out very nicely. We are getting three women's matches on this card, which is nice. So we are getting, um, Jade and, uh, is defending her title against Anna J Thunder Rosa versus Serena deep. And then we're getting the women's Owen Hart match or tournament match. So, or cup match, I should say. So we're getting three matches this time. So that's exciting. And they should all be on the main card, even though we have had the discussion that the buy-in is just as important <laughs> because they don't treat it like WWE has, has taught us <laughs> that the buy-in is important and they're trying to sell the pay-per-view. And so on the buy-in, I mean, we're getting a really good free match. We're getting Hookhausen and their very first match. <laughs> Versus Tony Nese and Smart Mark Sterling. So, you know, if that doesn't make you want to buy a pay per view, <laughs> well, then you have no pulse. Yeah, exactly. So I don't know what else they'll they'll add into it unless they. But yes, I'm looking forward to Hookhausen's first match. I'm enjoying their little this little story they've built with them. <laughs> yeah, so. it's a lot of fun, and, and people enjoy. I mean, I like it. It's a lot of yeah. fun. It's they're both. I mean. I think this is a good way to get Dan Housen out there while he's still building. But I mean, clearly he's getting close to being able to wrestle for wrestle, like really yeah. wrestle. Like I'm being ready. cleared from, so, yeah. you know, he but, has. I mean, the guy did not have like three rods. <laughs> or something, so. Right. I mean, give him a little bit of leeway here. Yeah, definitely. But, yeah. And it gives Hook, you know, I think that's somebody that Hook can, you know, because some people were like, keep Hook away from him. And I'm like, they're yeah. both their own. I think it's they're both their own entity and they're both fun in different ways. And so I think that it makes sense because I was like, wrestling. Well, it's going to run its course. It's not it gonna will. Last but forever. in the meantime, let us. I mean, wrestling doesn't have to be, have reasons all the time. Like it can sometimes things can just be fun and we can yeah. just enjoy them. And it gives and it helps Hook to work with somebody like Dan Housen. Hook has only done like. He's only had, I believe, I think we've had, I think he's had eight matches now. He had his first indie match. Um, I think it was last week and I saw the clip of it and it was, it fit basically inside of a Twitter clip from what I understand. I don't think that was edited. I think it was the entire match. He just, he came out there in sweatpants book he had a uh, he had a shirt on his backpack and he just came out there and he just put the dude in the red rum and that was it oh, <laughs> so, okay. yeah all right <laughs> yeah I it was that so it was his first indie match. match but then he didn't do all but then he just did what he does which i mean you know for what it is for right now i mean yeah it's you fine. know what yeah i mean it's similar to something like along the lines of uh, orange cassidy and yeah what, and we'll eventually see that like he can like because we obviously orange cassidy can go like we've seen what oh yeah do. of course they're gonna hold dan Housen probably the same way where he's gonna do a little things here and there and then they're finally gonna put him in a matchup where you can see what he can actually do yeah. and i think they're gonna do that with hook i mean and hook we have seen he can do the submission stuff he can well, do yeah that's what i was gonna that's say we've thing. actually seen him wrestle he can wrestle we've yeah. seen that he can wrestle also so why not give the kid a chance to build a little bit of a gimmick yeah and, it's, and like we because you know there was a discussion <clears throat> like right in the beginning with hook and they were like well what is his point? what does it matter let let why can he just not have like why can't we have fun with it like we're already having fun with it on twitter like mm -hmm. why can't we just it kind of became its own thing it's been very organic let it do what it's gonna do and run its course and then you know he'll be on to the next thing and kind of like dan Housen, like you know it's a, he's always gonna probably be like orange cassidy they're always gonna have the comedy type of stuff but then they're gonna be in situations where they can do more than that and they can be entertaining and they're gonna sell tickets they're gonna sell t-shirts <laughs> they yeah. already do i mean you see the kids who dress up like orange cassidy you see the people who wear face paint like dan Housen, and so they're always gonna that they're gonna have that so i 
don't think it needs to be, it doesn't have to be like, I don't think Dan Housen or Orange, well, Orange Cassidy did make it look like he might unseat Kenny Omega <laughs> last year at Double or Nothing. And it came close. And so maybe we'll see that. But, you know, we, I think we all know that, you know, Dan Housen's probably not ever going to be AW World Champion. He may not ever be TNT Champion. And that's okay. Like, let us have fun with it. Like, it doesn't have to be, like, not everything in wrestling has to be, like, so serious and, like, has to have these things. We can have Ariano's. It's okay. Exactly. Who Moxley They're still fun. fears. Moxley fears that man. He yeah, doesn't want to wrestle Yano. You've seen no. it. We've seen it. That ain't happening at Forbidden Door. I mean, that was a mess. So, well, yeah. It was a disaster. There was so much <laughs> tape. It was a real mess. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, although these now, these shows, in fairness, though, do have to do a little bit of building for Forbidden Door, both. I mean, Devil or Nothing and yeah. Dominion. So they they're can't definitely leave could... it completely out of there because they're trying to. Although I guess they can since they like don't have any tickets to give away. They just like open <laughs> that up a is few true. more. But he, that is, that is been, true. I mean, I, they can do whatever they want apparently because they like sold yeah. all the way out. Yeah, so. and then they added more tickets and sold all those out And too. then sold those too. I mean, yeah. and without when, a card. Without knowing. No card. No card at all. No card. I, we don't know who's going to be on it. No Kenny Omega clue. likely may or may not be back from surgery. He may show up. He, he may, may show not. up, but he's probably not going to have a match. And, you know, <laughs> they'll probably, I mean, I guess they're selling it kind of like they were with Madison Square Garden when when Jay White single-handedly sold it out. Well, yes. uh, <laughs> that there's the expectation that, you know, Okada will be on the card. Uh, there's the expectation that Kenny may do something. Uh, there had been some ex- expectation that, um, well, and I think even so, Ibushi's not, even with all the other stuff, he's not anywhere physically ready. So, I mean, they're just doing, so they're they're selling it almost like word of mouth, basically. That's yeah. <laughs> how that card sold out. And, you know, I think whoever ends up on, so it's in, it will be interesting to see, I think, specifically if Heyman Page retains over CM Punk and oh what gosh, that, because A, it would be, yeah, because CM Punk is eventually going to win the title, whether it's next Sunday or down the line at All Out, where I think it should happen. <laughs> um, it, it's going to happen, you know, eventually, whether it like I said, so I, it would be huge for Hangman to pick up a win over CM Punk here. And so it would be huge for Hangman if he goes into Forbidden Door as the champion. You would assume he would face Okada. Uh, If CM Punk wins the title, you would assume that CM Punk is going to be the one to wrestle Okada. So I feel like whoever wins. So I feel like, so maybe we get an Okada message next week. And he's like, I'm coming for you. (laughs) We're going to do title versus title. Or not, obviously not title versus title, but champion versus champion. I I don't think any titles will be on the line there. (laughs) But, you know, it'll be kind of just who's the best from New Japan and who's the best from AEW. And that's going to be obviously the main event. So will that be Hangman Page or will it be CM Punk versus Okada? So I think that definitely will come out of there. Um, Maybe we get, you know, some other, maybe we have some surprises and some people pop up to kind of set up, um, you know, maybe Tana shows up with uh and and does something with you know i can't with believe Rock. something in that vein it yeah is so i feel like more, something, I feel, with a lot you know, of them the way that juice robinson you know was goading uh moxley or the tanahashi yeah. thing with the pain maker situation yeah i feel like they made lean in that direction yeah with some of so stuff. even if people because some people are still i think are still in the united states from the last set of shows so i would think you so there's a possibility that somebody could actually show up but if not i think we get the video things that they've done before um where they've had you know where they've made their matches that way or they've shown like a they've shown like a symbol like when we didn't know that we were getting the debt like who the death rider was like we got so we had those things so i could definitely see them kind of leaning into that too um but i do think that we might get at least one match from Forbidden Door out of what happens. Or if it, if it doesn't happen at Double or Nothing, then obviously I think Dynamite, the Dynamite after like the Fallout show will probably have some stuff and we'll start getting little hints of, you know, what's coming. And so, and like you said, there's a lot of stuff coming up. So we've got Double or Nothing, then there's Forbidden Door and then there's Dominion or Dominion and then Forbidden Door and then G1. So they're all, and BOSJ is happening. So we've got all this just kind of, this summer is going to be stacked with stuff and it feels like they're kind of building off of each other, which is really cool to see. And then Hopefully we get some DDT 
in here as well in the mix. <laughs> and so we can see some of that and maybe get some ladies involved uh, in that type of stuff. But yeah, so we've got a lot of cool things coming up, I think, as wrestling fans this summer. For people who are fans of AEW and New Japan, I think we're going to be busy. And yeah, the next level, I mean, the next like two, three weeks when you consider, I mean, this double or nothing, it's going to be back in yeah, Vegas. It's going to be all yeah. fun. There's going to be, I think that the energy is going to be way through the roof on this one. I yeah. Think it's really, I mean, there's nothing not to like about where this card is going. I just, I mean, I feel like you have to, you have yeah. to, both of those shows need to have something yeah. more than an advertisement for the show. I, yeah. I, you know, Definitely. I feel like there needs, even if it's one thing, I feel like it needs to be something. Yeah. And I think, and, you know, maybe they tease something at, at Dull or Nothing and then confirm it at Dominion or maybe. something like that. Or yeah. maybe, like, so maybe... I think it's a way to do it. So maybe Okada issues a challenge or maybe, you know, Tana is, like... I, taunts John Moxley or something and then you know at Dominion John Moxley is like uh, you know I accept or you know so maybe they do something like that where we get some com like have some hints at D Double or Nothing and then get confirmation at Dominion or something so they kind of play into each other um, or you know maybe he has Shooter show up and do something on his back <laughs> or something like that but yeah so there's definitely I think there's some cool things that could hopefully happen and hopefully yeah. we're not hyping ourselves up <laughs> because <laughs> you know wrestling there's fans a lot of, there's a lot to see on double or nothing that's yeah sure. definitely so i think double or nothing is going to have a little bit more of a kick to it than it normally does and it's coming on the hills of their three-year anniversary so show is this coming yeah. wednesday yeah, and so amazing. i think there's a lot that could happen at double or nothing because i think it's not that this interview not that this interview is not already important but i think this year has a little bit more so I feel it feels like there's going to be something else that's going to happen because because we've got Forbidden Door and Dominion coming up and it's the three year anniversary. So it just feels like this is the time that Double or Nothing feels a lot bigger than it has in the past. Um, so Which I'm is really pretty thinking. crazy when you think about how big it feels usually. Yeah. Anyway. So. Yeah, because I mean, and even like last year's Double or Nothing, that's the one that I went to. And that was the first pay-per-view back in front of fans. Um, and so that was a really, so now this year is the first time that it's back in Vegas. And so it's got, it, so it already has that kind of aspect to it yeah. as well. And speaking of Vegas, we've got, um, we've got some Fight Game Media people that will be in Vegas. <laughs> I am going to throw this up here. This is coming up also uh, this week. Oh, I was supposed to put it in. I put that on there. It's Tuesday. Yeah. Tuesday, <laughs> I put Tuesday, everything Tuesday. In there. <laughs> That's Tuesday. Everything's Tuesday. This is coming up Tuesday at 10 15 Eastern. Uh, and this is uh, where the boom and the dynamite show. And I thought I'd throw this up for everybody because yeah. I actually enjoy both of these shows myself. Mm -hmm. Uh, really have fun and that's when those gentlemen get together and they're going to get together on the YouTube and do a preview yeah. before they all they may be getting on their planes immediately after that I don't know <laughs> before they get sucked um, into double or nothing madness they're going to they're they're come uh, give you some some previews and stuff so definitely and we'll make sure I mean so obviously like we've said a million times make sure you're subscribed to uh, the fight game media YouTube because it'll turn on your notifications and it'll tell you when they're going live and then of course you know follow fight game media on Twitter follow us on Twitter we'll definitely be plugging that show for them and reminding you and fight game media will remind you and make sure that you're following so there's, we'll make sure you see it. <laughs> we'll make sure you see it. We're, we're the best retweeters on the network. So, yes, uh, we, we are. We're the winners. So if you, if you don't know, ask us. That's us. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But so I, I think there may be a, a post, post game show. Listen to me for Double or Nothing. But I don't know because Sam and I, are, I think, are the only two people staying home. So maybe <laughs> if it feels like it, <laughs> you may be so stuck think, with us if we decide to uh, have a thing. So yeah, just we look out. We'll let you guys know. Yeah, I think that's um, we're kind of leaning towards that. I think that's kind of where we're we're headed. Is probably alive thing after of course make sure you're following us on twitter because we will twitter, tell you, we will we will, you now. yeah we'll tell you there um and that you know the the tuesday night show maybe they'll also pop it in if we go ahead and confirm that then maybe they can pop it in to let you know for sure but yeah so there's a lot of stuff going on 
make sure you're following Fly Game Media on YouTube. Like I tell you every week, a lot of people put a lot of hard work into producing content for you guys. And um, so make sure that you are subscribed so you don't miss anything. Follow them on Facebook and Twitter. We I do have an Instagram there, as well. We, we, we were doing pretty well with kind of updating it. Now we've kind of backed off a little bit. So that's a, that's a thing we've got to work on, but do follow us over there. Go give us some old likes. We don't care if it, it's not weird. If you are creepy. No, you need Instagram. to smash that bell and <laughs> Yes. Hit that up like button and all that other stuff. Leave us comments, terrible. send us gifts. Send us <laughs> so, gifts. We do like gifts. We actually. do like gifts. So, this yeah, so there's a lot going on this week. It's pay per view. And we have so. the cutest uh, logo. We so. do have the cutest logo. So. Look for the cute logo. And we have the, and uh, the cute logo has all the good info. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> See? Wasn't that us putting ourselves like way over here? We're just going to It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Totally fine. I mean, and so yes, and like I said, we'll make sure we put up the link to the to the bug extra so that you can go listen to that yes. to go check out David's stuff. Um, and we're we're on social media obviously all the time. We're forever posting over there. We posted, we had a conversation about Juice Robinson's new shirt yesterday <laughs> on the Power Bomb show. Yeah, yeah, because Sam had wondered about there being a rock hard shirt, and in fact, there is one. And there you know what? One. I should have known. I was like. You know, and then you're like, I think I might like this. And I'm like, of course you do. Yeah, I mean, I looked at it a lot before I arrived at that. I, I, I looked first at it a lot too. I my was sister like, looked oh. at it and she was like, Juice has a new shirt and it's the Rock Card shirt. And then she was like, it's kind of interesting. And then she showed me and then I looked at it. And then I, because so I was looking at it and I was like, I mean, I don't hate it. <laughs> but I don't know... <laughs> I like it for heel juice. Like I like it for like the vibe he's going for. He's trying to get as far away from flamboyant juice Robinson as possible. So like, I get it still says rock hard on it. <laughs> it definitely has a look about it. It might be a shirt that I would only wear to a wrestling show. And maybe on this podcast, it's probably not one I would wear out to the public. <laughs> See, My merch of the week was the Carl Fredericks. Uh, yes, I saw. Yeah. And I got one for me and one for Bob. Bob nice. is going to get the kanji and I got the 3d slasher one. Cause you're going to have to do like favorite. a, we'll have to do like an unboxing so you can show. <laughs> oh, I should because canvas, theory really actually they do like uh, they, they do cute stuff in their box well then they, yeah that would be cool it. yeah so maybe I'll, I'll bring that with me the next time but yeah uh, one of the shows I, that ones. one i love that one i've been yeah. like really excited and it's like i love the colors and yeah i Bob saw it on twitter very, it looks really cool very very i was like okay this is how we're gonna do this you're going to get the spirit wolf one and I'm going to get the 3d horror one. And it was like, okay, cool. And we can have our <laughs> Carl Frederick stuff. And it's just, they Perfect. just did such a nice job. And I really wanted yeah. to support that. And he had a lot of nice things to say about them on the, uh, ah, they did a great interview. Uh, John LaRocca and Garrett did a great interview on the Fight yeah. Game Network with Carl, which if you haven't listened, go listen, because he talks about um, growing up in the JoJo, I'll call it. <laughs> but uh, it's the most, the most recent uh, Fight Game Network podcast. Yeah. He talks about um, just first coming to the JoJo and what it was like and meeting all those guys. And I think it's stories that you would really enjoy. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, so that's really that cool. Out. So yeah, we should, if, if you can wait that long to open it. I, I, think I, I, think I know you might be really excited. So you can just do it and then you can be like, look what I got. So we won't make you, you won't have to. No, I can, I, I, won't I, force I can you probably don't wait for it. I was going to say, I, I, won't, I don't, I won't, because well, I know you'll be excited. So if you get too excited and can't wait and just have to show us, you know, that will work too. <laughs> I, I, I will see how I feel. I'll see okay. if I can contain myself. <laughs> All right, so I think that is all for us this week. My microphone says it is. Microphone's like, it's been an hour. Get your butts off the air. Yeah, they're like, <laughs> you've already said, and then like you're already gonna make them listen to an hour long conversation about Sasha and Naomi. So yeah. they've got two, got two hours, two worth hours of, of us of content. And then if you do live stuff this weekend, this is too much. This microphone's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna burn out. <laughs> I'm gonna I will not make it to double or nothing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so um we hope you all have a good week. Make sure you're following us on Twitter, Fight Game Media on Twitter, Fight Game Media on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. <laughs> Support us everywhere. Leave us some comments. But yeah, so um, we will probably be back. We definitely will be doing a, a next show. Something. It, yeah. It will I mean. probably be 
a live stream recap type of thing. We'll let you know the details for sure so that you can figure out what we're doing next. Um, but we hope that you have a good week and we will talk to you soon. Have a good one, everybody.